Hi, my name's Matt, and I'm back with more of the best of the West. Today, I am so excited to show you West Yellowstone, Montana, which is one of the gateway towns to Yellowstone National Park. In this video, we will see bears, wolves, horses, lakes, rivers, waterfalls, and geysers. West Yellowstone is a small town of about 1,200 people located just outside the west entrance to Yellowstone. While most of Yellowstone is in Wyoming, a small section of the park extends into Montana, so three of the park entrances are located in Montana, including West Yellowstone, which is the most popular entrance to the park. Our first stop is the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. This was initially a troubled private venture, but in 1999 it became a non-profit organization and is a highly respected educational facility as well as a home for rescued wildlife. The first thing you'll see is the permanent bear display, which includes a discussion of the history of bear feeding in Yellowstone. Yes, people used to be able to feed the bears in Yellowstone. The bears are outside in a really nice habitat. One thing we really enjoyed is that they rotate the bears on display so when they come out, they're ready to hunt for hidden food and play in the water. They're active. These bears are rescued bears. For example, Bo was a bear who got too comfortable in nearby Rainbow Point campground, regularly invading it in search of food. Instead of being put down, the Grizzly Discovery Center stepped in to adopt him. You can adopt him as well by making a donation on the website to help fund his very expensive care. The wolves are directly across from the bears. These wolves were not born in the wild, but rather in zoos or other places that couldn't care for them. People come from all over the world to spot wolves in Lamar Valley, but they can be difficult to spot and you have to wake up extremely early to see them usually. Maybe this isn't as cool as seeing them in the wild, but you do get to see them up close. Wolves were eliminated from the ecosystem for about 60 years, but were brought back by the park in 1995. It's also a nice surprise to find other animals here. They have a bird section, as well as a new indoor facility for otters. These playful guys are known to be hunting machines and can also be seen in the wild in Yellowstone. The bears, wolves, and otters were great to see, but of course, our kids' favorites were the squirrels. Just another reminder that kids and adults see the world quite differently. Although I have to admit, it was fun watching these guys play. Next up is the Playmill Theater. This playhouse has been running for over 50 years. We haven't done this yet, but it's on our bucket list due to the extremely high customer reviews. Our next activity is a horseback ride. There is only one company who can operate horseback rides in Yellowstone Park, but if that's booked up, don't hesitate to ride nearby as the entire area is perfect horse riding country. If you haven't done it before, don't stress. The horses are impeccably trained and the guides will take care of you. I don't think anyone in our party had ridden a horse before except me. Here we got jelly bean. Copen. We had a guide in front and in back to make sure everything went smoothly. Our guides were Savvy on the left and Lexi on the right. Lexi is a state rodeo champion and a star at the College of Southern Idaho. We'll see Lexi again in a few moments competing in the rodeo. Our horses were named Jellybean, Copen, Geronimo, and Gator. We booked our ride with Creekside Trail Rides. It's a great trail for beginners and kids. If you're looking for a little more adventure and something longer, there are many other options around. I just pulled in the rodeo right there. Take your horse, horse! The West Yellowstone Rodeo is operated by the same company as Creekside Trail Rides, and they offer a package deal. The West Yellowstone Rodeo has been in operation for over 20 years. You can buy tickets online or when you arrive at the gate. They don't usually sell out, but it is possible. 
Just make sure you bring cash if you want to purchase burgers from the Snack Shack. The rodeo contestants aren't professionals and they are rarely able to ride the bulls or bronx for the full 8 seconds, but it's more about the atmosphere and you can't beat the seats. We had a great time cheering on Lexi and her competitions. The best part is when they invite the kids into the arena. Follow me up here. Everybody do some jumping jacks. Now everybody take a seat. Sit down, it's okay. Okay, now everybody lay down. Oh, clever. Yes. Lay down, buddy. It's oh, okay. There's gonna be some mad mama over the stand. Okay, now make a dirt angel. Oh, God. It's okay. Everybody won't be mad. It's fine. One, two, three, four. Go get the cow. <laughs> If you've ever wondered if the rodeo clowns get hurt, I can assure you that they do. This guy got a hoof in the mouth, but kept on ticking. I'm always amazed by how good the announcers are, even at these little rodeos. This is Dave Brewer from Tennessee, and he was fantastic. <laughs> Up next is Big Gun Fun. Earlier this year, I tried out the Cody Firearms Experience on the other side of the park, so I thought I'd see how the west side of the park compares. I'm not a gun owner nor an enthusiast, but I can drop a few Jacksons in a place like this for literally one minute of fun. It's obvious I'm not used to this sort of thing. Okay, I'm in there. Got the middle, and I got 23 more of these. <laughs> More accurate on the single shot. Once the gun got going, I was all over. <laughs> Before we cover more things to do, let me mention two places to eat in West Yellowstone. We usually eat in our campground or picnic in the park, but last year Cheryl and I tried Mosta Asian because we just needed a quick bite. Our meal was great. But my favorite food in West Yellowstone is the city creamery. The City Creamery Homemade Ice Cream. Finish out your day with a nice homemade ice cream. My favorite flavor is <laughs> that they have is double chocolate orange. It is delicious. About 20 minutes away is gorgeous Hebgen Lake. This is formed by the Hebgen Dam, which stops Madison River, the beginning of which is in Yellowstone, and we'll see it in a few moments. Hebgen Lake is a popular camping area, and we've camped here a few times. This is Rainbow Point Campground. Remember Bo the bear who was rescued? This was the campground he hung out in and this is where he gets his name, from Rainbow. I remember camping here once and hearing coyotes howling in the night. Don't worry though, coyotes won't attack. At least I don't think they do. We also camped on the other side of the lake at Beaver Creek. Both campgrounds were really nice. One of our viewers rented pontoons here on this lake for his 40th birthday last year. In 1959, Hebgen Lake was the site of an enormous earthquake. On a beautiful summer night, many people were camping along the Madison River on the other side of the dam. At 11.30 at night, the area was rocked with a major earthquake equivalent to the famous San Francisco earthquake of 1906. A huge slice of the mountain broke off and slid into the canyon below blocking the Madison River. Some people were smashed by the huge boulders and others were trapped in the canyon. Heroic efforts were made to rescue many of these people, but still around 30 people died. The rock slide formed a natural dam a few miles downstream of the Hebgen Dam and thus formed another lake. This lake is now known as Earthquake Lake or more commonly Quake Lake. It's a little eerie seeing the trees that once lined the river in the canyon below, now dead, still protruding from the lake. A visitor center interprets the events and memorializes those who lost their lives and those heroic people who saved many other lives. If you want to learn more about this truly unbelievable event, I've put a link to another video I made in the description. About an hour north are three Old West towns that my parents just love. Virginia City and Nevada City are two gold rush towns with a wild outlaw past. Calamity Jane even lived here for a short time. They became ghost towns but were later restored and now you can walk around the old historic buildings today. 
Nearby Ennis was also one of these Old West towns, but today it is famous for fly fishing. They have a yearly fly fishing festival as well as a lot of outdoor art, much of which revolves around fishing. There are many rivers flowing out of Yellowstone and it seems like they are all used for fishing and river rafting. There are many companies in the area who will give you guided tours. Cheryl's dad is our tour guide when we go. This is a lazy section of the river near Island Park, Idaho. Bear World is about an hour away from West Yellowstone. Bear World has long been one of our favorites. Bear World is a little more playful than the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. Here, you get to drive through an enclosed area with all sorts of animals, including this very rare albino elk. Say hello, bear. Hello. <laughs> uh oh. But the stars, of course, are the bears. The grizzlies always seem to be napping, but the black bears walk right up to your car like in the old Yellowstone days. All right, buddy, see you later, dude. Still later. You still can't feed them, at least from the car. Once inside, you can pay extra to bottle feed the bear cubs. The petting zoo is free and also great for the kiddos, especially if you get to see Stilts the moose. Let your kids enjoy the kiddie rides, also included with admission. You can even ride the rides with your kids, but trust me on this, avoid the spinning bear. Mesa Falls is a short detour on the way to West Yellowstone. The National Park Service gets all the love nowadays, but I'm telling you, the Forest Service manages some great sites. Mesa Falls even has a little visitor center with some cool displays of animals inside. Idaho Falls is another city to stop on the way to the park. It's a nice clean city with the Snake River running right through the town. Walk to the falls to take a picture with the beautiful LDS temple in the background. We also like to ride bikes along the river. Visit Art Gallery to see vibrant street art or the Museum of Clean as one of our viewers did. Now let's cover some of the main sites in Yellowstone if you enter the park from West Yellowstone. Madison Valley is an underrated place to see elk, bison, or other wildlife. It seems we almost always have an encounter here. What a great welcome to Yellowstone. Madison Junction is where the Madison River begins. It has a little visitor center with ranger programs and a nice view of the valley. Gibbon Falls is also nearby and is one of my favorite waterfalls in the park. Grand Prismatic Spring is nearby. This area was once called Hell's Half Acre because it just seemed so hellish. And West Yellowstone is the closest entrance to Old Faithful, home of the most famous geyser on earth. Some people say this is overrated, but not me. It's one of the prettier geyser eruptions in the park, and it consists of nature shooting water nearly 200 feet out of the ground at regular intervals. Understandably, massive crowds gather around for each eruption. But there are other geysers that erupt with regularity, and some of these are close to Old Faithful. I've created a game plan for seeing more geysers erupt, so if you want to learn more about planning your trip to Yellowstone, click the video image on your screen. Until next time, go west, young traveler.